Oh, hi, everybody. Well, Cheryl Ashley is not here because um, she's um, she's run out of money, so she's selling her organs on the streets of Glasgow. And Chris yeah. is here. And they're high-quality organs. You can play them in any church. Oh, get it? Like pipe organs. I'm sorry for that long that took. I um, My mouse was on another screen, so I had to scroll it over here so that I could kick him off. And I got to tell you, it feels right, doesn't it? Yeah, it feels nice. Let's just notice that no one is saying something fucking insane like nice organ, like an organ pun. Fuck yeah. you. And, you know, it's just one of those things where it's just, isn't it nice? Isn't it nice someone in here isn't giving us like a headache? But for the soul, let's, let's bring him back. <laughs> Chris, something that came up on last week's shows that I, that Ashley's not here yet, but I would like to talk to you about, which we both discussed, which is neither one of us believe you that you worked in a bar in a bank and think you made that up. And also, oh, okay. I'd like to say, doesn't sound real and sounds yeah. like a bad lie. Sounds like yeah, a bad yeah. lie. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, what what kind of proof do you, do you need? Because it it happened. And What's weird is, I don't think any proof would help. Uh, yeah. uh, well, what am I supposed to do? I, me I remember during the interview, I um, I wasn't too hot on getting. This is when I was in Toronto the first time. I was still in the Airbnb. I, I hadn't even found my apartment yet. How many, and uh, how many times have you been in Toronto in the course of this program? Twice now. Once for I think five months, and then three months this time. Ig exhausting. Yeah, the last three years for everyone have just been exhausting. Yeah. Well, remember, like, I think I counted the apartments that I've lived in in the last, like, 18 months, and I think it was 11. Fuck you. Fuck. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, ucked. But, um, but yeah, so I went to the, um, went to the interview and I, I ended up talking to this guy and he was like, so where have you worked? I was like, kind of, I've worked every bar. Like every, I've worked nightclubs and fancy cocktails and illegal raves and house party. I've worked everything. And he was like, okay, well, we're hiring for a bar in a bank just for bankers. And I was like, I haven't worked that bar. That's the one remaining bar that I've never worked in. Actually, to <laughs> bring you back. to speed, yeah. we are talking to Chris about the fact that we didn't believe that his bar job was real in a bank. Also, let's see if you te this technically worked. Go ahead, Ashley, talk now. Now. Yeah, there you go. We Yay! Start. We can start a show, and that's not how you started. Did you sell? <laughs> did you sell your organ to maybe a man in a white mask who lives in the basement of a theater? Yeah, Ashley, did you? Why would I do some, that? Because that's where you were before. You were selling all your internal organs on the street of Glasgow oh, for rent. No, not not internal, just organs, preferably oh, pipe. <laughs> ah, so much better. <laughs> You know what? Talking of selling things on the streets of Glasgow, there was some lad chancing his arm to sell cold bottles of water all around Calvin Grove Park today. I bet you and he did well. I bet you know you what? I'm sure well. he did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it Guaranteed. is. It is 29 degrees in Glasgow today. Yeah. It's over. I just have a pure sheen of sweat all over my body. I'm going to say this right time. now. I'm going to say this. <laughs> And I'll say this well, forever. I think, I think it suits me. <laughs> um, I guarantee you there are people in Scotland, and I know there are people in England with their windows shut, and they are sweating going, we don't get a summer. We don't get a yeah. summer. <laughs> Probably. I remember last year when I was in a Argos buying fans for Angel Comedy because I was staying there in the top of the Bill Murray, and everyone living in the Bill Murray didn't have a fan. They were like, no, we don't need a fan. It doesn't get hot. It doesn't get hot enough in London. Bear in mind, this is how this was said to me. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't get it doesn't get hot in London, John. We don't need a fan. <laughs> but that's very much that's like a that's a British Isles mentality. Cause I remember mm -hmm. my mom, like, you know, I'm from the West Coast and it gets like it gets fairly hot in the summer out there. And, you know, like 35 kind of. And um and I was like 20 five maybe 26 and i was i was talking to my mom and she's like i was like oh what's that and she's like oh i bought like a, a fan for a room because it was hot and i was like oh that took a while and she's like yeah i just finally realized that like it's hot and i don't have to be and so i bought a fan Fuck it me. only took her hey. 46 40, years yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is excellent yes i, I actually um Ashley, where's your my, fan? Do you have I a fan? I don't have a fan, but fuck off. 
fuck off. What do you mean you don't have a fan? Well, John, it doesn't get hot in Scotland. So right. why would you? Except, <laughs> except it's got hot in Scotland the last fucking four years. But that's what I'm saying. My mom, also Irish. And it's just a thing of like, you just Be suck better. it up and complain. That's Be better. I don't complain. It's not about the why complaining. Did you, why did it's you take her out for that? That was a fine moment. That was not about the lack of a fam. I still feel like, it, no, 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 I feel like it's going to work. It's going to work Unfair. back to watch this. Watch this. It's going to work back to the reason why she doesn't have a fan. Go ahead. I'm sure. Go it. ahead. I like mm. the heat. All right. What did I fucking say, Chris? What did I That's fucking say? Answer. No, That's it's not fair. fair. That's, That's not, not, fair. not a ducking of a fan. That's a totally fair answer. You've gone power mad. Let's you have say, gone oh, power I, man. You want to know why I, I actually like the Nazi Ashley, party. take him off. Ashley, take him off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That power. <laughs> I, 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 I just, I knew he was going to just put himself back. So. <laughs> I don't like being by myself. You John's lost it. John's gone it's too totally far. Not Absolutely too far. ridiculous Ryan, behavior. Um, Chris has been muting on, muted on the countdown. Too hot. It's not too hot. Ridiculous. I mean, Ashley likes the heat. She's explained that, so so I get it. Ooh, but but again, I would like ridiculous. to say something about liking the heat. Absurd. Even if you like the heat, it's still nice to have a little. On the old face. It is, but usually, as much as it does get hot in Scotland, in Go ahead. Britain, in Ireland, it's usually, there is usually still a breeze. And we don't get that sort of stifling, suffocating heat that you mm. definitely need a fan for. I don't, we okay. don't get that that often. You have nature's I face. Just, I just have all of my windows open and it's quite cool in my room. I, I want you to know this. I want to say this. Get a fan. The party is over. Scotland is St. Bart's. <laughs> like, I don't. It's going to be hot in that, Scotland. So goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I did the wrong thing. I was trying to. <laughs> I was just trying to take it's, Chris off. Um, it is probably going to. I, I'll think about getting a fan, but I don't currently feel like I need or want one. I'm not saying it's not hot. I'm just saying I don't want a fan. <laughs> So speaking of Irish tendencies, I put a video in the private chat before I jumped off. Ashley, you should be able to see. No, Excuse me, see it. private chat wipes itself when you. Leave oh, when you leave. Back. Yeah. Oh shit. Okay. Well, there's. So, did either of you hear about what Conor McGregor did last week? Which oh thing? God, what did he do? So, so he was a. Uh, um, I guess he's like. So it's the it's the 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 NBA finals just ended. It was the Miami Heat versus Denver Nuggets. Denver Nuggets won. Congratulations, oh and. Um, the Miami Heat, I guess, entered into a partnership with some project product that like Conor McGregor's making that I'm sure we'll find out in 10 years kills people. Mm -hmm. But for right now, it's an official business. And so they like as part of a launch thing, they brought him out onto the court before the game. And they had like him and the mascot doing like a fun little spar thing. Only McGregor didn't do it fun. He sent the guy in the mascot costume to the hospital. Yeah, that sounds oh. like something that Conor McGregor would do. Full whacked him. Full whacked him. And then when he was down, whacked him again. Yeah. That was the one. I'm still strong. I'm still able to beat everybody. Ugh. I and it's freaking great, hate even, that guy. Even in even the crowd there, like because you know, people like you know, you shove a mask out, there's like been a lot of fun, like antics that way. But even the crowd in Miami who are hyped, it's the NBA finals, it's game four, they're only down. And it was like even you the silence in that arena because they knew that this was no longer a bit. And yeah. like the, the, the staff of the, at the stadium are trying to play along because they're not sure what is the bit and what isn't. So they just drag this mascot off the court by his feet. Like he's been so like imaginary fun. KO'd, like they commit to the yeah. bit. <laughs> oh my God. That's so if, you, if, you, if you look that's up, if you look so up, Conor, if you look up Conor McGregor mascot on YouTube, you can find, um, the, so the, many the footage of it. of it. It's so funny. Oh, He's oh, such a dick. Is we are now entering into the Conor McGregor 
I can't handle that I'm no longer going to be a good fighter. I didn't even have to type. No, you don't. Full name Connor. How, yeah. how many? How, I want to. I'm going to predict you got to C O N and it. Yeah, came that's up. exactly no. where I got to. Yeah. And it came up. And I got another, if you left it at C, it would have been like the fifth one, because you have to understand that Connor McGregor to so many dudes that I know is their Jesus. He is a man oh, in a suit who swore so, into a microphone. So many people. He exemplifies uh, like masculinity and, f and, and earning your fucking power or some bullshit like that. He, he sucks. He's not he was, that he was good a of a fighter. He was gateway Andrew Tate. Yeah, he's yeah. Gay, that's exactly correct. He's yeah. a, he's a he's a mar all he did was he brought pro he brought he pretended to be Ric Flair while doing cage fighting and made himself presented as the greatest cage fighter of all time except for and this is why MMA rules which is when someone like figures out how to hack it everyone mm -hmm. else is like just wait wait okay we figured out how to beat him gentlemen commence operation mug the Ronda well, Rousey one is brutal cuz she gets kicked in the face by a minister's daughter and then she's brought into the cage and Literally, Amanda Nunez fucking tossed her around like she was an idea. Mm -hmm. And stupid Conor McGregor got his stupid oh leg broken. Oh my god, by... sorry. I just watched the video. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I the wasn't the... meaning to, but I was just like oh, bringing it's... it because I had left it play without looking of at course. it. And I just went in to like rewind it and it, it just it was it just happened so quickly. Yeah. It oh is. my god. Why does he hit him again when he's on the ground? Because right? he's a baby. Because he's a coked up steroided and he's baby. Just, he's just laughing. Yeah, uh, bring and it, bring it up. Put it, put it on the yeah, put it on it the I'm, gonna, I'm gonna bring okay. it up. I'm gonna bring Ladies it up. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready for Conor McGregor to be now. Conor McGregor, I'm making this prediction. If he is not in jail for 10 years, then I don't know anything about cocaine. He just, he will literally just buy him, buy his way out of jail though. He, he no, he's going to, he's going to do something so bad. Like he's going to try and like, he's going to like punch kid rock at a, at the next, at the, one of the Republican primary debates, Conor McGregor's <laughs> watching on, walking on stage and he's going to try and spin kick Nick, Nikki Haley. Like we, this is only the <laughs> beginning yeah, he is McGregor definitely going to really do fun. something really, really bad, but I think it's going to take a few really, really yeah. bad things for him to actually do much time in prison. Yeah, also, so it's going to be five or six. I think, I think, I think he'll kill someone. I can oh, see that. I, can yeah. see I that. think he will. Yeah. I think he will full kill someone at some point. I, yeah. Or also someone's going to kill him. Like This is the other thing I just want to say about MMA. Anderson Silva is still out there, and he is old and has bad hips. But he is also the scariest, weirdest Brazilian man. And I this could be very possible that Anderson Silva hasn't been seen in a while. And he's buried into Ander, or Conor McGregor's house. Conor McGregor's <laughs> just going to be asleep on a pile of cocaine. And then the spider will descend from the ceiling with his weird belly fat that doesn't really seem to affect him. And he's just going to break his neck and then leave. Yeah. Where's John right. Jones? I want well. Why can't this be John? John Jones is the good MMA coach. I don't. I don't know anything about. I don't know anything about MMA either. You're on your own here, bud. Okay, John Jones is is the greatest MMA fighter ever, but he can't fight anymore because he took too many gas station Viagras and then he got drug tested too many times. So now he just hangs out. He rules. John Jones is fucking cool. All right, hit this. <laughs> Good lord. We're going to turn to the mascot stunt gone wrong. UFC superstar <laughs> Conor McGregor. So what's supposed to Wham. pretend to slug the Miami Heat mascot in a pre-planned <laughs> skit during the NBA Finals, but he ended up sending him to the ER. Will Reeve and then Denver. Look at him laughing about five He's of a the finals. Good morning, Will. What's this going to be? Hey, good morning, Michael. It was a strange scene. I want to watch the footage. I don't, I don't care what the guy's saying. Can I just, I just where footage. did they find that fucking white man? Go back. Go, I want to see oh, this lo white... local news, buddy. He was a he was oh. a star wide receiver on the high school football team. That's exactly he... what it is. <laughs> yeah. Strange scene. Conor McGregor Pause. was not given a warm welcome by the. He Mike. seems like a Simpsons character. Also, yeah. am I not crazy that he has the weird? He has the weirdest amount of space between his teeth. <laughs> I can't. I mean, right now it looks like he has no teeth. Like oh, he's giving yeah, BJ's under screen. a bridge. Wow, he was out there to sell a product. Oh, God, and damn it. I'm zoomed in. I'm. It's like he. All of his teeth are vampire teeth, and they're also they're just slightly too far away from each other like it's an almost slightly, indetectable yeah. distance am i crazy ashley zoom in ashley zoom i mean in. yes <laughs> okay but i am but this i don't, is an I don't think i can it. zoom in it's a video 
Oh, I I can zoom in on the screen. Like I literally am just zooming in on the screen mm. to look at his fucking gnarly ass champion. Eventually, Bernie the mascot came out to help sell the skit, but it went too far. All the way to the hospital. <laughs> Love that pause. It this went morning, too the far. Man inside yeah. this All the way to the hospital. Is recovering after this oh my god. Knock his hat off. Why does he hit him again? Why does he hit him again? Because he's such a piece of shit. Someone there had a handgun. At center court, I, at someone should have just walked game. up to Connor and shot him in the foot. They just yeah. like, oh, you want to fucking do this, bitch? It's absolutely absurd behavior. Um, I also like why is his hair slicked back? Like he looks like he's trying to be a mafioso leader. Ashley, I'm gonna that say right. something. That's how he sees himself. Yeah, one hundred percent. I'm gonna say something, and that's why he's going to kill someone. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you who does not wear tough well. And that is small white men. They don't wear tough well. They don't no. look good. No one thinks he's tough. And Connor is a little baby. Daddy yes. didn't love Connor. Connor needs to be tough. I was guess I what, was Connor? Talking. I want to hit you with my car. Go ahead, Chris. I was talking to a bunch of comics at the, the poker game that I play at, and I asked them because they're all UFC guys, and I'm not. I know the guys and, are uh, really UFC guys. <laughs> I really like wow, oh, like undercard stats. And um, they're nice boys, but whatever. <laughs> so, so I was uh, uh, I was asking him, I was like, who, who like retired but maintained their reputation? Like, who is a statesman in UFC? Because it's a pretty young sport. And I was like, like Conor McGregor was it, and like, where's his reputation now? And they were like, nah, everybody hates that fucking guy. Yeah. <laughs> that guy sucks. He was just. Yeah. We were all taken aback, and he's Irish. He's very charming. It's like a young Colin Farrell effect. Like, remember when he used to go on David Letterman and swear, and we all found it very charming instead of yeah. like deeply no. unprofessional. <laughs> and um, and uh, I won't and, have a word against Colin like, Farrell, though. So I, I love Colin Farrell, but it was like it was wild. He just couldn't yeah. stop swearing, and it's like, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't that hard. You went to you went to church school, right? You didn't swear then. Um, That's why but, he swears so much. Yeah. <laughs> I, this is just a sidebar. I want. I will go to my grave wanting to know if it, the rumor I heard once from a drunk man in London was true, which is the only reason Carl F Kelvin Farrell was famous is that he was like a bit part in a play. Kevin Spacey walked up to him and went, "Let me suck your penis, and I'll introduce you to my agent and my manager." And Colin Farrell went, "Yep." And then launch Colin Farrell's career. I don't know if that's true. I, I feel like we may find out, though. <laughs> I heard a different version of that same story, but it wasn't Kevin Spacey. It was, Ooh. and it was before all the Kevin Spacey stuff happened when I heard it. So oh, he was oh I wonder if it's changed. To, yeah. Yeah. Damn. Do you know who it was? I can't remember. In my brain, it's saying a Harrison Ford, but I don't think that's right. Oh. I mean, I'm going to say and this so, right now. I want it to be Harrison I Ford. I want it to be Harrison yeah. Ford. <laughs> 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 but it Colin, feels like it's wondering. not. <laughs> no, but yeah, but I, I did I did hear a very similar story years ago. Um, <laughs> and so... I think I, I, I think Colin Farrell is the kind of person that would do it, so... Well, and knowing what we know about Hollywood now, I mean, what we always sort of assumed to be true, but is like now definitely was true. It's not that far out of how people got famous. So, you know, you know, so, uh, yeah, yeah I can see it. <laughs> and uh, he's a very charming man. I know. I know he pays attention to the balls. That'll get you an Asian. What was that last sentence? <laughs> oh, he pays attention to the balls. He gets in there. He... <laughs> no, I think I know what John heard. <laughs> <laughs> what was the what was the last part you said? Oh shit, I don't know. I heard you say something about Asians. I heard you go. Yes. Asians. Oh that, no, I know Asians. that you said Asians. 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 Yeah. That's much yeah. better. Yeah. What yeah. I heard was it was just yeah. a weird. I was like, that's a real curveball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Um, I fucking hate Conor McGregor, and I'm so looking forward to this descent because this is we've only. I mean, the descent's just... already begun. Oh no, no. But it it, it has only oh, no. begun, but it has begun. Do you understand what? that no one ages well in combat sports, and no one ages well when you're the confident guy in combat? Like, because MMA is it's all of the nerds who couldn't get into show business, just they went to the gym, and Conor McGregor is a bully. So I know there's someone just like I'll get him. I'll fucking get them. Like it's going to be. You know what worries me about it though is like we're in a new time for those guys. Where it used to be that they would like top of the thing, 
then fuck it up, but then everyone hates them, and that was kind of a wrap, and they'd be on like a VH1 show, like whatever happened to this guy. Mm-hmm. And now he's gonna go, he'll have a he'll have a podcast in two years where he is talking about I I don't know birthing rates of black people compared to white people. And uh, it'll be some sort of race replacement stuff. He's going to do that, and he's going to make more money than he ever did in MMA. This I man agree. is not going anywhere from our lives. He I is agree. going to become a bigger part than he ever was. I agree that he's going to start a podcast. Here is the problem. Conor McGregor is one of those guys that he doesn't actually know how to be charming or talk. He knows how to say eight things. And podcasts mm-hmm. are very interesting in that it really reveals the flaws of those guys, and that he's not that good of a broadcaster. So that podcast, he is going to start and he is going to do those things. But luckily, the information will be impenetrable to access because it'll be like phrased in some weird anecdote about his friend Fat Steve, who's thin and it won't make any sense. And he'll be eating in the middle of it because he doesn't know how to do anything but train. So it'll just be like eating a very large sandwich into a microphone. Like it'll be like watching me without any sort of pressure to be professional. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, let me say this about the Bolivia. (laughs) <laughs> Gregor show. Oh fuck. That will happen and it might it might end up being that Andrew Tate is Gateway Connor McGregor. <laughs> oh, uh, they swap. God Let me damn. ask you a question. You know yeah. nothing about Connor McGregor. You meet him in a bar and he says, I want to eat your butt. Do you let no. Connor McGregor eat your butt? No. I agree. He looks like a he looks like a weird action figure. He, yeah. yeah, he's that, not. He, nice. he would make me feel unsafe. Yeah. yeah, that's that's a that's a key thing. Is as soon as he walks up, you're like, mm, no, yeah. no. no. <laughs> yeah, Conor McGregor really looks like a Poundland guile. Especially because I'm sure fight. he would have he would have a posse. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. and I've, I've, I'm, I'm, I do not. I have never found it attractive when men are with a gang of men that all look <laughs> unless like it's brunch of... yeah what if it's brunch? unless it's brunch no but yeah. even <laughs> even then if they're just actually what if it's you know when they're like program but there is a difference between men hanging out and then men who travel in a pack. Yeah, correct. Again, yeah. Chris and I aren't thinking about one of us being the defined leader, which is such a weird thing friends do in a friend group is they'll be like, yeah. this guy's the leader. And I always want to be like, this is, first of all, that guy is not the leader. He drives a Honda Civic that has lights on underneath it. He is, if anything, pretty dope. Pretty dope. I mean, I'm not saying I don't like it. I'm just saying that's not who should be in charge. I remember I used to, I might have, I might have told this on stage, but my, my, um, my first hour show had a bit about um, like alphas, and um, and the the idea was like if you ever if you ever like bored at a bar, pick a group of guys, figure out which ones like the alpha guy, <laughs> and then and then just separate. I already them from love the this pack. game. I love <laughs> then, this game. <laughs> and then just just separate him from the pack. Just like pretend you know him from high school or something like that. Tell him you're gonna buy him, but just yeah. get him away. And then just wait and watch all the other guys just <laughs> not just gravitate towards him <laughs> as they get closer. They're just the line at the end was like, I don't know why, but I feel safer. And That's it was so funny. I remember it was Sadaf was in the crowd for one of them, and she said that there was this moment where there was like this big pack of guys. It must have been like a stag do or something, and the guy that was clearly that guy in the group just burst out laughing at that <laughs> bit. <laughs> And then, and then on like on like a two second delay, all the other guys started laughing. And that like, <laughs> oh, I saw this, and I was nearly going to draw attention to it, except that I, I, the, it was it was in it was an audience in a show, and the show was already getting derailed enough. I was just I'm not getting into this. But there was, um, and also I'm not very good at audience interaction, so I didn't trust myself enough to get into it. But there was a stag do in a show that I was doing last week, and I saw that exact thing of like one of this. I think it was. It must have been the best man sat next to the stag, and I think it was. But he was clearly trying so hard to make this stag really good, 
And as the show was going on, I, I kept seeing him just like every time he would laugh, he would just look at the other guy to see if the guy was enjoying himself. <laughs> what, are you married? <laughs> it was oh. just so, it, it was it was sort of endearing, but it was also yeah. really pathetic. Oh, it's pathetic. <laughs> it's kind of sweet, but pathetic. It was, but it was so intensely like he was even sort of laughing forward so that he could look over to him properly to see if he was laughing and enjoying himself <laughs> properly. <laughs> So funny. <coughs> uh, yeah, I wanted when I was eleven. I was in uh, uh, the class that was not with all my friends, and they were in another class. And I remember, like midway through the year, we were hanging out on the uh, on the uh, in the park at recess. And uh, one of the kids was like, "Oh, this is uh, oh, this is, like, this is Alex. He's like the leader of the group now." And I was like, "No, say he's it. not. You just say it. He, he's not." <laughs> And he's like, yeah, he's like our, he's like the coolest of all of us. And I was like, he is not. And this is so weird. <laughs> and I am still friends with one of the people that was in that group, the guy who said he is the leader. And I bring it up and be like, that was so fucking lame. And you guys are losers. And also <laughs> that guy, Alex, hated me. And I think I look back because I was like, why? And I was like, oh, because I was like, you know, the leader, we're friends. This is crazy. Uh -huh. That's so, so funny. I have I have a thing where those those guys, the ones that are chosen as leader, really like me. <laughs> yeah, there's because you're you're a you're a you're a translucent glass. There's nothing there's nothing there's nothing you know what I mean? You're no threat. They don't <laughs> well, yeah, that, they don't feel like they have to try and alpha to you. Well, it was the thing Sadaf noticed it because she would watch it happen, and she said it happens every single time where they would come up. And we'd be talking and they would talk to their friends a certain way that was frankly disrespectful. And, <laughs> and there was this weird thing where it was like, they were just like, oh, you don't want my power. Like <laughs> you don't. <laughs> and so good. This is not, <laughs> you're just over, you're on next to all this. And so we can we can hang out and that'll be fine. But I don't have to dominate you or feel threatened by you. So I can just treat you like a person. Chris, like, in the private chat, can you put a weird. name? Is there someone I know that has been like this? No, no these weren't like these weren't like comics or anything. This was just like out in the world, just because like I, I I end up meeting a bunch of people. And yeah, she would watch it happen time and time again. And she's like, it's fucking fascinating to watch. It's it's a very strange interaction. See, I have a different version, which is you can't get me around a short guy who started going to the gym and maybe taking some boxing classes because he will want to fight me. Like, and it's <laughs> so fucking irritating. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. I, I remember, sort of yeah, I can ugh. see how that might happen. <laughs> I remember being at the McCuntleth Comedy Festival once, and I ran into three separate comedians who all were going through breakups and were clearly like, "There's that guy who looks like a guy who used to be shitty to me," mm -hmm. and like. One of them was so cunty that I literally like I he is very successful and I wish him a me tooing for how much of a fucking dick oh. that guy could be behind the scenes. Oh boy. Name I mean private that. chat, obviously. I mean, private yeah. chat. Chris, well, Chris has already like heard my like just this guy fucking stinks and <laughs> mm. Bo Burnham. No, I'm just Little name called Dara Ov said too much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah. I fucking yeah, hate right. that guy. Yeah, I, I fucking Stinks. hate this guy. <laughs> Always been nice to me. Always been nice to me. <laughs> that he's means Chris, such, and I don't want to be rude. He's a child. No. Well, he, what he is is he's someone that doesn't realize you can get punched in the face, and yeah. uh, one day that's going to happen to him. And also, he's gotten. Uh, this person's been humbled a bit recently because of certain things, including someone. I'm not going to go into that. I'll reveal exactly who they are, but it is very satisfying. Oh, we'll do that after the episode because I don't know any of that. I haven't oh, heard it. Let's just put it in the old just private, private chat. chat. Oh, this is the classic I saw, episode. So I want everyone to see their reaction to this, I, which is. <laughs> I saw this person, this guy, die on his arse at a gig. And just absolutely hated it uh as in like just didn't handle it very well and threw such a hissy fit and it's just like you're a stand-up surely you've died before like come yeah 100 percent. 
Oh, but, yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> really I'm good. sorry, just reading that in the chat. Uh, uh, gotcha. Really so yeah. Funny. yeah, I could see that. I could see that. That makes so sense. That's funny. That's very and, funny. Yeah. How's that manifesting? How's that? <laughs> I mean, this is the detail that I find the best one. Yeah, you do. You do. When you meet a comic who can't handle a bomb, and I understand, like, sometimes you're in it and you just, I mean, we're on a podcast with John. But you sometimes you just can't handle it and you just go like fuck everybody here and all of your <laughs> families and all your descendants. But That's great. there's and it's like it's, it's weird to not know that it's happening. Sometimes Yeah, also, I no, I do, do I do understand well. <laughs> that a I do understand that a bad bomb is hard to take, but it was just it was the way he treated everybody running the gig. Oh, As so he, he took it out on the staff. Not, oh, he not took even it out. He took it out on the staff. He took it out on the audience. He took like oh, he, full hissy fit. Full hissy fit. Like yeah. full. It, this is everyone's fault but mine. Right. And almost, almost became because the gig was. <laughs> more private chat. More private chat. Oh, okay. I'm gonna say this about the location so, that you just put yeah, in the well, private chat. The amount, the, <laughs> of, the amount of people that have had crazy bad gigs at that particular so, thing. So many bad gigs at that gig. At, I mean, or, we can, at that, we can no, mention I, where. Can no, I mention? don't. I don't think we should because it will potentially highlight who it. Like, no, I don't know. No, that's you pretty neat. The amount of people that have had, like, yeah. okay, yeah, a lot median... of people have died. Okay, so the, yeah. I'm I put in the chat that this gig was at the Kilkenny Cat Lab. Okay, yeah. so the and... Kilkenny Cat Lab Festival <laughs> has so many famous stories of people dying. It's the so great. Many. That's why I was like, no, 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 <laughs> because there is like, my God, there's like. The Someone... audiences are not com comedy audiences. No, but what's crazy is that a lot of these people like... might not even own a TV. Like, okay. <laughs> right. But before we get to any of that, what has always astounded me about that festival is it's literally like it's in this small, cool city in Ireland. It's yeah. not a comedy literate crowd. And then they always book like, we're going to be booking t Tony Law, Ben Tarje, and the concept of whimsy. And you're like, yes. what? are you doing it's like yeah ah. it's like big time uh drama turkey folk from dublin that book it and so they always re they and the, to be fair they book a great oh it's lineup, the best lineup you've ever seen it's, yeah. it's they phenomenal. just the audience but does not appreciate it at all <laughs> that in itself is such a funny bit to book yeah. like really avant-garde comics and to do it in the most like main street ireland yeah. And venues and on so it'll is, never work that's fucking it's always, hilarious it's the bank holiday weekend so it's always just people who are just enjoying the bank holiday and there's a bit of a festival on and stag dues and that's pretty right. much it i've watched so, so many funny. people bomb at that festival this year it was the first year i didn't go and work on that festival and i really really missed it but i'm kind of hoping i might get booked for it next year so we'll see um it is but i i just want to finish off my point about that person bombed but like <laughs> almost almost became racist about it like towards irish people towards no no irish no people. no no, no. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> i was really hoping you just pick another race let me tell no, you why towards it went irish there. people like really really started to get upset about how backwards everything was there and about <laughs> how people clearly just didn't appreciate what he was doing like mm -hmm. and just listening yeah. to him i was just like oh you're a cunt Ireland it was famously, it was the first time I've met that person. Ireland famously, no sense of art, no appreciation yeah. of creative endeavors. I mean, look, I can't say that he's wrong, but you don't say it. I can say, <laughs> no. I'll, I'll, I'll say that he's wrong. First of all, as an English person, you never get to culturally critique. We have Mr. Blobby. Get yeah. something fucking intelligent. And, but it is Go just that, fuck yourself. And the amount of people that do bomb there because of that pure ignorance of thinking that the entire entertainment sphere and that everything kind of culturally intelligent is just that little bubble that exists in London. They're always the people that do really badly at that festival. I remember watching someone do a bit about the central line in Edinburgh and some Whoa. <laughs> someone went, what the fuck's the central line? And he went, you know, it's the train line. And the guy went, that's another country. 
Like, you know, yeah. it, was like, like, it was just, it was just that late in life. And it was such a genuine, like, <laughs> sir, no. Like, yeah. Oh, it was like literally like I could feel the sweat forming under my skin because it was one of those audience comedian moments where like, you know, once it pierces it, like we were like, this is this isn't a learned man on stage. Yeah. This is a loser <laughs> with a microphone. <laughs> Just like crumbled. Oh, and you know, what, you know what kills me about stuff like that is like all you have to do is go. Yeah, no, fair enough. And just acknowledge it for the crowd. Make fun of yourself a little bit and move on. And you will have lost no goodwill. But mm -hmm. so many comics just can't fucking put their ego down for like a second. No. Like we did we did the we did the hangover comedy cure inside this week for the first time ever. That's the show I run on Sundays. It's been going for like eleven years. They've never gone inside, but it was raining and I wanted to go ahead. And we actually had a big table of Irish people in, um, who were just just happened to be in the bar. And uh one of them just popped in on, there's this comic in town, Daniel Woodrow, he's great. He um, he said a line and then like one of the Irish guys just hit him with a dad joke that was perfectly timed and absolutely like applied to the bit mm -hmm. and got the biggest pop of the night. Like easily the oh, biggest yeah, laugh yeah. of the whole fucking show. And, when I, and Daniel just took it and he's like, fuck man, that was really funny. I'm supposed to be done, but I can't let you have the last laugh of my set. So, completely. <laughs> and everyone laughed. It was like, yeah, go on. But it's like, it's so easy to just give them the win and move on. <laughs> and so few comics will do it. Oh. Yeah. I, I actually am going to disagree with you. I think so few comics in the UK will do it. Yeah, I think that fair. North America will be a lot more calm with it. And here is why. In North America, if the crowd gets a little out of control, you might have to be like, all right, let's settle down. In the UK, if the crowd gets a little out of control, someone's going to steal the microphone and try and shove it up the comedian's butt. Like, it's just like, it's one of those things where it's, it's and I totally agree, you need to be more open-hearted and you need to, like, if someone nails it in the crowd, like, give them the respect. But it's just... It's especially like doing gigs in America versus gigs in Britain. Like I showed up at a brewery show and it was just like people scattered around tables. And I was like, and I, in my England head, I'd be like, well, I'm about to be called a cunt by an old lady and I feel really bad. And then you walk in and it's <laughs> Americans and they're just, they're excited to watch a little bit of comedy and there's not that many people there. So they're going to, they're going to bring extra energy because they want to have a good time too. While in England, it's like, I've paid my ticket to let this fuck know. I'm funnier than them. <laughs> well, I even I even went in I even went into that indoor I even went into that indoor gig like I said to the acts it's like listen we've never done it in here I don't know how it's gonna go you're supposed to do ten to twelve but if it starts to get weird like it's cool just bail I'll fill I don't mind and that was that British that me doing stand up in the UK for ten years yeah and just being like oh this could go real bad at any fucking second so if you need to go. I don't mind taking these fuckers down for you. And it was just lovely. It was very, everything was fine. Yeah. Do you feel, I feel crazy sometimes because I'll be looking at a show being like, if these people fucking pipe up, I'm going to have to fight them all. And yeah. then you're like, oh, I'm in America. They will not. Like, <laughs> no, they'll just be fine. They'll just be lovely. And if they're not, the rest of the crowd will put that person in line. Can I tell you about the, the heckler we had last week? No, you tell me about your heckler, then I will tell you about the heckler I had in Chattanooga, and it bo it will illustrate the point from two sides of the border. Go ahead. So we had we had like uh, it, I just literally just gotten on stage, and can you guys hear that? Is that loud in the back? Or I can hear it, but you can we can still hear yeah, you. Yeah, you can hear oh, okay. it. What is it? Um, I don't know. I think it's like a it's a machine of some kind. It might be a helicopter. Like a it might be more. something. Yeah. Um. So uh, yeah, I'll just go inside, but. So someone's playing the keyboards. We just, we just, just started the show. Like I literally came on stage. It was, you know, by the way they cheer sometimes at the start, you know, it's going to be a good show. Like the vibes are just right. Yeah. And um, within 30 seconds, this fucking hammered guy that I'd never yes. seen before just starts piping up and he's like, this show's shit. And it was like, what? I just got of What the fuck are you talking about? And I did like, you know, I do. I've talked about this before. I have my progression with hecklers where I always give someone a chance to be a better person than they That's are. Great. And um, and so I gave him like a couple chances and then finally kicked him out and he left. And one of the guys in the crowd, I had the, the uh, staff from a local bar, Sneaky D's, John. 
Um, the still going? Meat. I thought they were shutting it down for a condo. That's exciting. Do not oh, order the food. Going, baby. You will yeah. get diarrhea. <laughs> and so they, uh, so they, uh, so they go. Um, one of them was a bouncer who's one of the biggest men I've ever seen in my fucking life. His hands were terrifying, just two sledgehammers. And uh, and so like I kick the guy out. He goes. the The crowd is like, you know, everyone rallies around having an enemy. So that was nice. We got it all back on track. And then he tried to come in a couple times and I held him at bay and I sent him back. And then on like the second to last act of the show, Rob, the bouncer from Sneaky D's, I was just sitting there just watching the show. And he comes up and he just taps me on the arm. He goes, hey, Chris. I was like, yeah. He's like, that guy won't be coming back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's, he on. is dead in a freezer somewhere. <laughs> what the fuck did he do? <laughs> Oh just let him know what will happen. I heard later, I heard later that apparently <laughs> um, Rob had gone in for a beer and the guy sort of like got in his face. So Rob said he spoke Spanish. The guy was Colombian and the Colombia guy just wouldn't believe it for some reason, like got right up in this gigantic man's face. And, and this Rob guy, he's just like, Hey man, step back, step back. And the guy wouldn't step back, kept getting closer. And so this giant just two hands shoved him. And like in an action movie, feet left the floor, went flying, banged into a table, fell, knocked someone's beer up. And then Rob just picked him up, carried him outside and put him down on the sidewalk and then came out to me and very calmly with no sign that he'd just been in an altercation went, he won't be coming back. That's <laughs> insane. God damn. He there was picked nothing, him up. <laughs> nothing better than surprise. There's a bouncer in the crowd and the, oh, crowd is, and the bouncer is on. Uh, I have a very similar story to this, slightly different variations in geography. Uh, I was doing comedy all-stars in the cow at the Edinburgh Festival. Nazim Hussein, a Australian Muslim comedian, was on. He walked <laughs> off stage, a very drunk man, screamed, I don't fucking like Muslims. To me, by your mind, I am not Muslim. And I went... And I went, couple of things, fuck you. Second of all, wrong act, man. How drunk are you that you think I'm a Muslim? Yeah. He then, thinking that his glass was a pint glass, uh, whipped a plastic glass at me and then got up and yelled, fuck, and started rushing the stage. So I just grabbed the mic stand being like, all right, I'm going to hit this guy as hard as I can with the bottom of this. Yep. And then hopefully someone backstage has went and gone and gotten security. But this being the Ember Festival, I'm pretty sure I'm alone. Mm -hmm. And he gets to the front row and four boys on the front row here, like right. Uh, if you've ever been in the cow, so there's two stairs here. They're uh -huh. right here as they come up, they stand up and I just go, they're trying to help. But like, let's not add more people. Like I am bonded. Like if someone hits me, there's insurance. You know what I'm saying? Let's not get a start a riot. So I go, no, no, no. And then the biggest of goes, uh, we're bouncers from the garage in Glasgow. We got this. And I went, understood, gentlemen. Thank you. Very much. And um, literally, and it was the most amazing mover. So he, like, that was so, it was so quick. But basically, he runs down the stairs. I'm going to stop them. As he gets to this stair, the back big guy goes, tells me that. I walk away. Then the other two just grab him in the midsection. And that guy just puts his hand on his throat. And then they put him <laughs> on his shoulder out. Back through the backstage, deposit him out off of underbelly property, walk back in. Like, I'm trying to, like, what the fuck is going on? They walk back in, take their seats, and I go, round of applause for these guys. They give me a big hug. They've come subsequent years. We're about to start the show, and that's when underbelly security rushes the stage. <laughs> <laughs> and I roasted them i was like oh, you guys are so, so bad at your job look at so these guys funny. oh my god yeah. that's, that's better then the next year i was on stage and i went this was what happened the first year last year and this was crazy and then i just out of the corner of my eye see three hands go up and i go holy shit we're here. Oh, amazing yeah. <laughs> i love that so do they come and see you then They've come, they came subsequent years to that, but they didn't come back last year. But literally, okay. like, it became a thing at that show. Like, Ed and That's Charlie, so who great. own Underbelly, came, were backstage when That's I was hosting because they're like, Oh, the chaps That's... here? We'd like to meet the chaps. <laughs> oh, that was so, so good. I, I remember talking to a security guy. They're, they're, they're trained in that neck grab thing. That's like a proper security grab, uh, like, thing that they do because it just totally kind of, get yeah. somebody feeling vulnerable 
Yeah. yeah. And they go, they're not squeezing. They're not actually doing anything. It just sort of frightens people. Yeah, completely. Yeah. It's, um, I remember. Ashley, you don't need to tell that. me that. I've had fun sex. I know what it's like when someone yeah. grabs your throat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I remember, I, I remember a, uh, a doorman at, um, audio where I worked in Brighton. This guy was, Ooh. this guy was a fucking psycho. Uh, but always nice to me normally. Uh, but every now and then just had like a temper and there was, you were going to, you know, you either duck him or it was coming at you. And I remember we, I was coming in, he hit me with a roast. I just hit him right back. And then quick as lightning, he just took two of his fingers and just put him right yeah. here yeah. in yeah. this gap and just pushed down. And I could not breathe. I couldn't move. It was just yeah. over. My whole body went into paralysis. And he's like, what'd you say? And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, and he's I like, yeah, I thought so. <laughs> That's great. I uh, I want to just say uh, I worked in, I hung out a lot in a bar called Grumpy's in Montreal. Mm -hmm. I'm, bartender. I'm not going to name this person because I'm about to just tell the story of the time they basically committed a crime. Um, Chris, not the one you're going to be thinking of, by the way. Uh, big ass bouncer, super drunk, being shitty. Mm. Uh, bartender comes around the bar, get the fuck out. The guy tries to do that similar thing. And uh, then the guy goes like this points down and the bouncer looks down and the guy's taking a big knife that he had brought it with him and has it at the guy's belly. <laughs> and the guy just nods. <laughs> <and walks out. laughs> that is excellent. It was holy shit. Now I want everyone to watch because Chris knows this guy. I have, I, I have an idea in my mind of who it is and I'm very curious to see if I'm right. Cause there's one person that's like I don't think you're right. lived a life. Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> Not who I was expecting. I think he was blackout drunk when he did it because he doesn't really remember it. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, All right. Yeah. Do we want to wrap up this episode? Yeah. Yeah, and... we have to wrap up this episode. Yeah, because you, yeah, you gotta go. I gotta go, but I I think I'll get in like, like the first 15 minutes of the next episode. So All right, let, so no sure. break. So let's immediately, we're heading over to the other episode. It, well, if you guys want a break, you can have a break. No, it's fine. We'd rather have more of you. We can take breaks after. Yeah. yeah. Listen in on Wednesday. I will tell the other story when a guy did something crazy in Grumpy's bar to get a bunch of violent people out, and it was so fucking nuts. I think Chris <laughs> may know this story. See you on Wednesday. Oh, Bye. we can fucking start the show. Guys, hang on. We have to start the show. <laughs> oh, no. The Canadians are coming. Chris, John, and Irish Ashley combine to make the ultimate team better than any wet dream. Welcome to the Untitled Twitch stream. John's the CEO and Boomer. Ashley's the real leader. Chris brings the vibes and juices. As our enjoyment increases, welcome to the Untitled Twitch stream. Thank you.